All right, now that we've had about a couple of days uh, to kind of digest what happened over the weekend as it concerns Dimitri Bival's upset win over Canelo Alvarez, upset on paper, but was the writing on the wall already? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I was, I've been speaking to a lot of people uh, as it concerns the outcome of this fight and, and really just what transpired in the ring, which I'll get to real quick, but I didn't get a chance to do a thorough uh, prediction video, uh, you know, as it concerns this fight, all, you know, just to be fair, okay, I eventually picked Canelo to win a hard fought unanimous decision, but I was on record and you can go back to the video I made. <laughs> and this is a couple months ago when I, we found out this fight was happening. I kept seeing people referring to Dimitri Bival as this Euro bum, this like, you know, um, Kovalev wannabe and, and, and inexperienced. And, 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 and my thing was, it's like, all right, are you come? Is this coming from the perspective of you're giving Canelo Alvarez just way too much respect? Or maybe you haven't really seen Dimitri Bival fight. Okay. So I go back to when I seen Bival fight on HBO for the first time. And this is around the time when Kovalev was still, I don't know if it was right before the Ward fight or after, I want to say before. He was a young prospect, started late as a pro, but there was just little subtle stuff that he did that I was like, oh, okay, let me keep an eye on this guy. And once HBO went defunct, right, he, he, uh, he you know, what, I forgot what deal he signed that just got him on uh, the zone. And from that point, listen, he beat Sullivan Barrera, Jean Pascal, Joe Smith, who's a, a current light heavyweight champion right now. And you, you, you kind of like ignore that, right? Because... I think a lot of the a lot of the times those fights weren't on HBO. They weren't in front of more people. Had we seen them on HBO, similar to, to how a lot of people got familiar with Kovalev before the war fight happened, there was a reason for that. Okay, Bivol never had that spotlight to really um, show we what he can do like on a big stage. But that all being said, his two previous fights didn't really exemplify his his total arsenal you know what i'm saying and i think a lot of it had to do with the fact that you know he he would fight to you know sometimes certain dudes levels but the one thing i noticed with, with dimitri bival historically throughout his fights the only guy that i saw that really hurt him was joe smith but like he recovered from that but all, but in general, he was a dude that didn't get hit very often. Skip now to the Canelo fight, and I'm sitting here like, I, I'm wondering like what the mo is from a lot of people thinking that you know Canelo is just gonna have a cakewalk with this guy because the other thing I was mentioning as a concern Bival was Bival, unlike Caleb Plant, unlike Billy Joe, unlike Callum Smith, I didn't think he was gonna go in to fight Canelo. To, to try to like in a sense fight to survive or like you're fighting your boss that's giving you like the biggest payday of your life and it's just like all right man just go with the i'm not suggesting canelo rigs fights i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is is that when, when you look at the approach that caleb plant callum smith and, and and billy joe had against canelo it was almost like a sign of respect and the one thing I said in the lead up, like in the preview was like, I didn't feel Bival was going to be that kind of guy because he doesn't fight in that manner. He he gets his jabs off to, to kind of set his range. And little by little, he starts to sneak in these right hands. What I didn't see him doing, but it was smart, was he started to throw combinations like around round three, like three or four. And every time Canelo would try to get like these... Every shot he tried to throw looked as if it was like a home run shot. And every time Canelo tried to get something off, Bet uh, Bival would get like two, three shots off 
following that. And, and I don't think Canelo was used to that, man. Because not even Triple G did that. Like, Triple G was more of an offensive force. Like, he was just trying to walk Canelo down. Where Bivol, in all honesty, used a lot of basic boxing, man. Me and Train and R.O.D., we talked about this. Like, as the fight was progressing and how it ended, Dimitri Bivol is a very skilled fighter. And he exemplified that in a lot of the fight, really after round four. Because to be honest with you, after that, I I find very little, I don't find many rounds to give Canelo. Because I feel by round six and seven, I feel Dimitri Bival figured Canelo out. And he mentions it a lot when you hear in the interviews where he talks about it, He's like he was loading up every shot. So there's no wonder he got tired by the eighth round. And it was visible. Canelo had his hands down. And I I just think ultimately, man, this, this was a true sign of sometimes you go up and wait too much and you fight a guy that is just that skilled and and will is gonna beat you nine t or ten times out of ten. Now the argument is like, can Bival beat Canelo at 168? Listen, man, like I personally wouldn't do it, but you start to teeter-totter around the fact of Canelo got outboxed. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing being a bigger guy and, and, and just being too strong and and, 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 it, and it's kind of like a rock'em, sock'em, robots kind of fight, but it really wasn't that. It was Bival being the bigger, better boxer. Now, we've seen other fighters go up and wait, right? And they were successful using their boxing skill. One thing Canelo did not do very much at all in this fight is throw a damn jab. You know, and Bival really nullified a lot of Canelo's offense. He, you know, the joke is his arm is bruised, but a lot of it is because he was catching a lot of his shots. He was even catching shots to the body and then would counter with left with left hooks. So again, Bival, he went in there. And they had a game plan, and they were strict, and they stuck to it, and they outworked, out hustle, and outbox Canelo Alvarez. Like that's as simple and plain as you can put it. And and I'll be dead honest with y'all, man. Like the shock of it obviously resonates with everybody, but to be honest with you, I wasn't that surprised, man. Canelo only had one fight prior at light heavyweight. And granted, he knocked out uh, Sergey Kovalev, who really wasn't in any form like how he was when he fought Andre Ward. But even when you watch that fight and go back, go I, like I, I'll tell y'all to go back. Canelo didn't look anywhere near as explosive. He didn't look anywhere near as fast. And granted, he got the knockout on Kovalev, but again, like there's context to everything. And he hit Bival with some shots, like looping shots around the guard, and, and and Bival took him, you know. So, so now it's like, all right, what does Canelo do? He he he's talking rematch and all this stuff, and and like with all due respect, l l let's revisit this, or let's revisit his uh, committal of what he's gonna do in the next month, a couple golf games, revisit things. Because I'll tell you right now, I would if I were Canelo and his team, I would take the high road and just go fight Gennady Golovkin a third time. Because I don't think, honestly, Canelo can beat Dimitri Bivol. I don't think Canelo is going to come in any different or Eddie Reynoso is going to apply a different game plan. That is going to nullify anything that Dimitri Bival already knows he can do to Canelo. I just think he's too small for the weight. Even at 168, Canelo isn't the biggest guy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, listen. The, the talk is Canelo dared to be great. I salute the guy. Just like I said in the preview. Like You got to give Canelo the credit in the sense he went up. But I'll tell you all this. I genuinely feel they 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 took Dimitri Bival for granted, and it's funny how Dimitri Bival is kind of joking about it, like tongue in cheek, 
Like he almost, he joked with Eddie Hearn, like, sorry. <laughs> I know, he goes, I know you're happy for me, but I know you're really not happy for me. <laughs> it's funny, man. Like, it's funny because he's just, he's sitting there kind of seeing all, like, the borderline disrespect he was getting from the point of Canelo being mentioned in with, with fights against uh, Alexander Usyk at a 200 pound catch weight and, and mentioning other fights when you, when, when I was even saying the lead up to the fight, I'm like, yo. Canelo still got to fight this guy, Bavall. Like, why are we talking about other fights? And now here we are. You know what I mean? So, I, I think Bavall, to be honest with you, I think it would really set a statement. And, and it would kind of just be him going, you know, like this. If he just took the high road himself and just waited for the winner, it better be even Joe Smith. Where he can be... Uh, undisputed light heavyweight champion and he could kind of control the dollar a little bit whereas opposed to trying to fight Go uh, um uh, canelo a second time they're gonna try to you know make their demands and things as such and he even said the same he even said he goes yo look at this point like you got to listen to me now you know you're you're the money man or whatever but like i don't need to fight you you know I already beat you. <laughs> so, and, 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 and I, and, and outside, of, again, outside of a big payday, and if that's what Dimitri Bivol wants, you know, I guess, but I think he's probably at this point got bigger fish to fry, man. And with Kinolo Alvarez, again, does he fight Triple G a third time? And then following that, you got Dave. I know everybody mentions Charlo and everything, but let's just be realistic, okay? The fight is David Benavidez, okay? And coming off of this fight, you have to wonder the mental of Canelo Alvarez. Anybody knows so. And them going back to the drawing board and listen, having to make some adjustments, man. Because I'll tell you one thing, Canelo, I still feel has issues with is that freaking gas tank, man. Dimitri Bivol fought at his pace and you could see Canelo was tired by the eighth round so imagine somebody like David Benavides who granted yeah just like Bivol doesn't have the overall experience in relation to Canelo but look what we just saw sometimes you just got to give these dudes the opportunity and and again like yeah Jamal Charlo yeah he should have gotten a shot and but I also say like these other guys should go fight each other because truth be told it's not like Dimitri Bivol beating Canelo is not going to retire because he beat Canelo Alvarez, or he, he's like, "Oh, I'm I'm done." I mean, mind you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about his purse, but it's not like he he got a career payday like to to be set for life beating Canelo. But I think he his stock got built where he can go now, like kind of command and say, "Well, I, you know, I I have I did this, you know, let's come to the table." But let's see what what goes on with Canelo Alvarez, man. I I, I if I were to roll the dice. I think they walk away from Dimitri Bivol and they they target Triple G. It's still a sellable fight from the perspective of now. Like I like I thought, any sign of vulnerability on Canelo is going to make that fight potentially just a little better than maybe like a month ago or maybe before Saturday, where now you know they could still sell it on the point like, well, can Golovkin get a, a legit win over? Canelo Alvarez, I mean, I would still favor Canelo in that fight, but it it really Canelo is like in a borderline fork. I would say after Triple G, if they after they said that, after that, yo, he really isn't a fork in the road. Because like I mentioned, there's still these guys, particularly like one man, because I don't think he's gonna go back to light heavyweight. It really comes down to David Benavides. I can't mention Charlo yet because he hasn't moved up to 168, so. But we'll see. I don't want to drag this on too much longer. Canelo Alvarez. Um, I. We'll, we'll see. Let me let me let me say before I wrap up. He is going to is or going to be thirty two years old. We gotta start wondering about, you know, lifting the hood up and seeing what the motor looks like. He's been fine since he was fifteen years old, man. And the other thing I want to mention too, before I wrap up. <laughs> And me and R.O.D. talked about this. The weight going up and down. I'm not going to mention the fighter's name, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Went up in weight. Came back down in weight. Just saying. Okay. 
I think Canelo should just stay at 168. If, if you're going to stay anywhere, be there. So that is pretty much it. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, appreciate it. It helps the algorithms. Um, but let me know what you think, man. Where does Canelo go next? Who do you got winning Dimitri Bival with against the winner? I mean, he beat Joe Smith already, but let's say Better Beef wins. Who do you got winning that fight? That like I, I'm dying to see that. That that'd be an amazing fight. So enjoy your night. I am out. Peace.